from 2008. It's Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. This was a return to adventure with Indiana Jones after nearly 20 years without anything. And while people were so excited to go and see it, many were disappointed in this film, didn't feel it lived up to the previous films in the, in the franchise. But I wonder what your take on it is because you didn't have to wait from 1981 to 2008 to see these four films. You've only seen three of the four. Temple of Doom is still a little too intense for you at this point, but you've seen three of them in a one year span. Mm -hmm. What do you think of this with regard to the Indiana Jones brand? I really like this. I like Marion and Indy working together. I really like them. I still think that The Last Crusade is my favorite. That might be just because that was the first one I've ever seen. And then I like Raiders of the Lost Ark. I think this one would be my third favorite as far, so far. Um, I really like Ox and Indy and Marion working together because Ox is kind of like by their side and he's telling weird things and they Marion and Indy both have to work together to like figure it out and I really like how Marion and Indy work like how their partnership works. What did you think of Mutt who winds up being Henry Jones the third he winds up being Indy's son did you like his character? Yes I did like his character at first I didn't really like it I don't know, I wasn't used to it in an Indiana Jones movie, but then I just kind of let it be what it is, and I kind of got used to him. I definitely, he definitely wasn't my favorite character, but I did get used to him. You know, Indy has a sidekick in the Temple of Doom, which is the film you haven't seen. He really doesn't have a sidekick for an entire film again until this one. And I actually thought Shia LaBeouf was fine in this role. He gets a lot of criticism, but they really did have a good dynamic between the two of them. They fought like father and son. Uh, I like the Marlon Brando aspect to what they brought to his character, and I know that was George Lucas doing that on purpose. And what people don't allow this film to do, or to be, is the 50s sci-fi B-movie that it's made to be. They want it to be the Saturday matinee serial from the 1930s that the other films were but it wasn't intended to be that. It's 20 years later. And what they did here, if I can articulate it, is they took the genre and allowed the genre to shift the way films shifted. In the 30s, it was the Saturday matinee serial. It was an adventure mm -hmm. film, right? By the time we get to the 50s, what's popular is those sci-fi B movies, like the Saucer Men from Mars and things like that. When we go to the sci-fi dine-in at Disney World and we sit and we see all the trailers and previews of those mm -hmm. films, that's what this was meant to be. So they, they allowed the films to evolve into the way, to follow the evolution of cinema in the American mm -hmm. society, and they put Indiana Jones as the hero of it. And as a 50s B-movie parody or tribute, I think it works fine. Mm -hmm. I really like this Indiana Jones. I think that you have to let it be what it is, and I think that you could compare it, but don't be too critical of it as far as comparing it goes. If, like, the, if, the other, if you had never seen the other Indiana Jones films, if this was the first one that you ever saw and it was the only one that existed, would you think this was a fun movie? I would. And I think that's the problem. I think people compare it to the other ones. Okay, compared to the other ones, it's my least favorite of the Indiana Jones films, but I don't necessarily think it's a bad Indiana Jones film. It's a different type of film. Again, it's that 50s sci-fi B-movie where he's the hero in it. Times have changed and he's trying to adapt to that. And it sort of allows him to age and it works in. And you, they bring Mutt in and he's of the 50s. So that's also this thing that Indy has to deal with is his own son and, and how your son is a product of their generation and you don't necessarily understand that. Mm -hmm. And so it plays out that way and I think it works fine. I think there's a lot of criticism of that. There's a couple spots where they show a little too much. We didn't need to see Mutt swinging through the trees like Tarzan. It would have been fine if he got 
caught up in the vine. He turned, he saw the monkey, the monkey saw him. And the next time we saw Mutt was when he swung out of the jungle and dropped into the car, right? Mm -hmm. Let the audience use their imagination to fill in what happened in between. How did he right. get from here to here? Same way Andy got, you know, on the submarine and didn't drown when he got to the sub base, right? Same thing. Maybe showing that was too much, you know? Mm -hmm. Or when she drives the car off and it lands on the tree. I know she saw the tree ahead of time and she knew it was there, but you know, maybe we didn't need that. The nuke the fridge scene, we dealt with that when we talked about Raiders of the Lost Ark, right? It's the mm -hmm. same as the summary. Could have, you know, it's larger than life and you have to just watch it wide eyed mm -hmm. and enjoy it, I think, in some ways. Yes, and one of the ways I enjoyed it is with all of the funny parts. Like when Mutt had the snake and he's pulling. Um, Marianne and Indy out of the quicksand and Indy is afraid of snakes so he didn't want to grab the snake or when Indy was hanging from the lamp and he's like man I thought that was close because he was so Oh yeah when close. he's going to try to swing into the, yes. in the when they're in the area 51 warehouse right mm -hmm. yeah I agree there's a lot of funny moments in this I hadn't remembered how many funny segments there were and it wasn't funny at the expense of Indy or at the expense of the movie it was funny within the context of the plot watching it with you the other night I found it very funny and I think some of the action scenes are right up there with any of the other Indiana Jones scenes I mean the part with the motorcycle chase <laughs> where they wind up in the library I think that's a fun scene I think the scene initially in the graveyard Mm -hmm. Which winds up with, with Mutt saying, you're a teacher? And, and Indy <laughs> says, part-time. That segment is creepy and fun. I, you know, I, I got more out of it this time because I just watched it without an agenda mm -hmm. when I watched it. So I think, it's, I think it's one of these films that as time goes on, people are going to appreciate much more than they, do, than they did when the film came out in theaters. I think it's going to grow on people and they're going to go, you know, it's not a bad installment in the Indiana Jones film series. It's not my favorite, but it's not a bad installment. Yeah. I think that's the difference. Everybody says it's a bad film. I don't know that it's a bad film. It's not the best Indiana Jones film. No, but it's not a bad film at all. You should. I think that you should see it, and you should see it with an open mind. I agree with that. You know, I, I think we. I'm guilty as guilty of this as anybody else. Is you know we tend to compare it to things that came before. And that's always going to be something that's just natural. You do that, but you also have to judge it in and of itself. So had this been the first Indiana Jones film, do you think they would have made a sequel? Do you think it would have been successful? People would have liked it and they would have made another one. Yes, I do think so. I think so too. I do. All right. Well, with all that in mind, see it. Yeah. I'm going to give it a see it too. I might not have said that back in 2008 initially, but I'm going to say it now. <laughs>